So we have a lot of stuff to cover this week because, well, there were a lot of incidents involving big brands. You heard some stuff about Facebook and Twitch. Um, Alex, what, what did you hear about those? Not so good things. Um, well, yeah. Facebook went down for like a good six hours and then Twitch involuntarily went open source. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so isn't it nice to see so many people congratulating Twitch on joining the open source community? Well, yeah, that was definitely something that happened this week. But let's go ahead and start with the Facebook issue because that didn't just, uh, just affect Facebook. It actually affected the entire internet. So if we go over to my screen, we can see what I think was probably the best write-up of what happened with Facebook disconnecting from the internet. So because Facebook had their own internet backbone, and they had certain policies enabled to prevent bad links from being forwarded to the outside internet, what kind of happened here was that when somebody accidentally uploaded a new configuration to their routers, it caused the network to shut off from the outside, which caused all the outside links to basically just disconnect and make the problem even worse than it already was internally. Hmm. So this had a lot of different side effects all across the internet, the most obvious of which was just being unable to access many Facebook properties like Instagram or I think it was like WhatsApp. Um, so it was really interesting that this caused such a big uh, kerfuffle on the internet because after a while, when uh, lots of applications that were pinging Facebook for everything from analytics to you know direct services, suddenly we're getting an error um, it turns out that a lot of people who wrote these apps didn't do a very good job of error handling. So can you imagine what would happen if like millions or, or you know billions even of devices which have Facebook uh, or a Facebook domain hard coded into them suddenly start aggressively flooding DNS servers for uh, the Facebook domain as soon as it goes down over and over and over and over super aggressively. Um, it, yeah, that's scary because like already these three apps by themselves are pretty prolific. Lots of people use these already, but then just like things that use Facebook under the under the layers are mm -hmm. also dependent on these services. And when that no longer works, um, tons of these services are destroyed, and it's that pretty much sucks. Yeah, and lots of apps will use like Facebook Analytics or other things that will in, you know interact with Facebook servers, but not necessarily you know like look like it's a Facebook product. But then if you have some app which in the background is doing advertising services through them or some other sort of service through them, you end up with a problem where developers can code their apps to just try as quickly as possible to get a response because they can never really conceive of a time when Facebook wouldn't be available. So this caused a denial of service attack. Well, basically a denial of service event, I guess you would call it, across the internet where lots of different web pages were actually having a hard time resolving because DNS servers were being hit by apps that had been poorly coded to deal with the absence of Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it's a really interesting look into how, you know, something like Facebook going down from a, a border gateway policy upload that was bad uh, can have rippling effects across the entire internet because obviously Facebook is a huge part of the internet. And in some you know, developing countries, Facebook is the internet because they'll sell phones that are heavily subsidized or even free through carriers that only can access Facebook. So it really has a big impact when these services go down uh, because it can affect the, the entire internet, obviously, but also people who depend on it uh, for access to information, which is not maybe the best place for information, but that's the way they've set themselves up. So uh, altogether, because this was only like six hours, it really didn't cause like a ton of damage. Um, you know, if this had been down for multiple days, it would have been obviously a lot worse. It also doesn't look like this was a malicious attack. It looks like it was just a problem with the way they had set up their system. And then the, the way that they attempted uh, to make their system robust inadvertently made this issue way worse. So a very interesting case in how a very, very wealthy, very, very well-resourced company can you know, make a couple little mistakes and that can cause issues for even websites that have nothing to do with Facebook just because of the fact they can't access resources like DNS that now lots of applications trying to get to Facebook are hogging. So um, really interesting way of looking at how fragile the internet is, that one company going down can drag so many other services with it, but a fascinating view into the way that these companies affect and shape the internet around them, and what would happen if Facebook really were to blink out of existence for an extended period of time. Um, so this is an interesting side effect. Uh, lots and lots of people left uh, 
Facebook products to Telegram and Signal. Hmm. And what's interesting, nice. and this is kind of something that like um, I, I noted with some of my uh, like <laughs> Twitter friends, um, the first time like I think it was like WhatsApp or whatever was switching over to um, a privacy policy that ex explicitly shared information with Facebook, tons of people left um, mm -hmm. and moved over to Signal. And I got like 20 or 30 notifications about like a bunch of old friends like signing up for Signal. I was like, oh, cool. This time when Facebook went down, like I'm seeing like notifications from Signal that they got lots of people. I did not get one notification of someone that I knew joining uh, Signal during mm -hmm. that time. So I sure. guess like everybody that I was like friends with like joined Already. the first time and then all mm -hmm. the late the latecomers are like people I don't know. Yeah, this um, is just like the second wave, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it's just very odd that like apparently like I'm seeing in the news that tons of people join Signal. I like I but I I just like didn't see any notifications. That's uh, that's also one of the things people really hate about Signal. As soon as you join it, it alerts everybody who has you in their contact book. For like a privacy app, like that's pretty a lot of people think that's pretty dumb, but it's also really hard to get people to like use Signal when you're using it. So I think identifying the other people who are already using it is like an attempt to get you to like connect with the I don't I don't know, but like it is really weird. Um, it's really weird that they they do that. So anyway, um, I did not see anyone sign up, but lots of people did. I think that's great because you know communication should be end-to-end -end encrypted. There's plenty of ways for you know anybody who needs that data really badly to legally get it. So I don't think that uh, Signal is a problem. I think it's great. And I think that uh, the more people on it, the better. All right, that's all we have this week. Thank you guys very much for joining us. If you haven't seen any of the other great, great Verona's content we have out there, make sure to check out the Verona's brand channel where our sometimes co-host Killian is also doing the threat update. And he has a new like mini like short version of the threat update that people really like. So make sure to check it out. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.